What a fellowship, what a joy divine, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms, oh what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, I'm leaning.
sing on. Oh, oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. I'm a lady on the everlasting. Oh, yeah, I'm a lady. I'm a lady. I say, and secure. Oh, oh. 
Oh, oh what a joy to be in your presence, Lord. What a joy to be in your presence. What a joy to feel the faith rising in me, rising in me. Well, Jesus went to the well, make the water wine. Raise of Lazarus from the dead, restore the sight to the blind. He's this man of Galilee, he walked across the sea. The greater things that you shall do, cause he gave the power to you and me, yeah. Are you ready for a miracle? Ready as I can be. Are you ready for a miracle? Still will set you free, yeah. Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready? Just with one command Said he who has ears is here Call them multitudes Blessed up pure in heart For they shall see the truth Yeah! Are you ready for a miracle? Ready as you can be Are you ready for a miracle? The Spirit will set you free Are you ready? without borders and I'm ready for a miracle and we'll walk upon the waters take me deeper than my feet could ever wander my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you could call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger.
trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would lead me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my whole spirit. Lead me. Hallelujah again. The world, hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome. The Just 
exalt him. Exalt him this morning. you this morning. We honor you. We welcome your spirit to dwell mightily within us and to express who you are through us. John, just sing that one more time. Oh, hail the power of Jesus. Sing, let angels prostrate. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of Bring people around you he is our king now let's point at all of those on the web and say he is our king worship him now let's clap our hands and thank God for what he's doing well welcome back to me it's wonderful to be here wonderful thank you so much for praying for us we uh, I can't say that's the, that, that's a long way to New Zealand and then Australia and then Singapore, but it was quite an impacting journey of what went on and how and how the Lord just met us. I mean, being there and worshiping with the people of God in other lands is just amazing. And what we experienced in every one of those nations was just incredible. In Singapore, we actually had uh, over 20-something nations from around. That, that was a private gathering because we had people from Iran, Afghanistan. Uh, many of the closed countries was, was with us. But the Spirit of God was so strong in that meeting. When we got to New Zealand, it was quite amazing because uh, just like our first people, their first people are, are the Maori people. And uh, so we, uh, we were greeted, I think many of you probably saw that on the Facebook, we were greeted by the Maori people, which was very unusual and quite an experience for everybody in the airport. And, uh, uh, and then uh, before we had the gathering, we were invited to their marae, um, like our reservations, to come up and worship. But they had their younger people in the Marai, 40 years and below, I would say, had never seen a Christian gathering in the Marai. The uh, Maori people would be on one side, and then we were on the other side facing them. And uh, the reason that we were at that Marai, now there's many Marais in New Zealand, but this is one of the main peoples at, uh, in Auckland. And the reason we were invited in they had had a prophecy for four generations back, almost 400 years, didn't they say? Four generations back. And the, one of their prophets, one of the Maori prophets, just like in our native people, we have era keepers who are prophetic. And one of their prophets had told them that a white man would come who would be an eagle. And they were to receive him, a man with white hair. And many of you know that my 
native name is Chief High White Eagle. And so they knew when we came, God had sent us. And there was something that happened in that interaction that was beyond anything that had happened before prophetically with the people. So we were able to minister and be involved and move forward. Brenda did a wonderful job of hosting us. And then in Brisbane, it was just incredible being in the church that we were in in Brisbane and the Apostolic Center we were in in Brisbane. And then they commissioned apostles and prophets while we were there. I, that was the first time they had really seen that done in Australia in a long time. We were with uh, HIM Network that Che's a part of. Che was there with us. And uh, uh, it was just an awesome time. So let's thank God for what he did around the world. So uh, while we were gone, the Lord began to really speak to me and Ann confirmed it. Uh, he spoke to me and he said, my people have a hard time seeing me because they don't fully know how to see the kingdom. And then I, I had written that down and I was pondering it because if someone asked me, well, what is the key to your life? I say, well, I seek the kingdom first. Many of you know that and he usually always say, well, what's your kingdom perspective in that? And the Lord is so shifting us from church to kingdom. And so knowing the teaching that this service is primarily uh, devoted to teaching and, uh, and operation, I, I knew that it was time for us to start talking more about the kingdom, the new book. How many of you have uh, The Apostolic Church Arising? If you don't have that book, you want to get that book. And then, you know, just as an example of kingdom, we have a wonderful group here with us that we'll introduce in the next service, Brian Will, uh, from Taiwan, just a kingdom group that are here. They're going to a gateway seminar. All of you from Taiwan, stand up. Let's welcome them here. So we were actually together having breakfast, and we were able to be in the garden when the sun came up. It was just a glorious experience. If you've not been to the garden, you need to go right now. It's, you know, the weather's perfect, and it's just a wonderful time. But uh, let me turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. When we're, a lot of times when we think about the Lord's Prayer or when we're thinking about uh, the Lord and the Beatitudes, really what He's giving us through the Beatitudes and then how He starts teaching in seven. If you, if you want to do something this, re this week, read uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 several times together. Then you'll see the kingdom go into an expression and operation in Matthew 8. Uh, but what he's doing when he starts with the Beatitudes, uh, he's starting to explain kingdom to us. And then finally, he gets over to Matthew 6, and he's uh, teaching the model prayer. How do we pray in the kingdom? And... Uh, and then he talks about, and you've seen me use this so many times, the eye of, we're made like an eye. Look at somebody and just said, you're supposed to see. And he talks about the lamp of the body. And you've seen me teach on that so many times. And then he gets down and tells them how to operate in the environment around them. He says, I don't want you worrying. How many have ever worried before? Well, that's not kingdom. Uh, from the chief worrier that had to be delivered. Now, 
Uh, it means, worry actually is a s simple word to understand. You're distracted or you're preoccupied over something. You're obsessive compulsive. You've got some big issues. Turn to somebody and just say, you might as well get delivered today. But then he gets down, when he's talking about that, he said, instead of worrying, seek ye the kingdom first. And his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Then the Lord started teaching on parables. Now, Anne's going to, Anne next week's going to speak in the first service because even his disciples had a hard time getting this. And see, you live in a spiritual dimension and you're seeing in parables. And I don't think we understand how to see in parables. I don't think we understand how to interpret what the Spirit's doing around us. I don't think we understand how to seek ye first the kingdom. And that's why we don't see breakthrough happening in a lot of areas. So we're starting on a journey right now for a new kingdom expression. Look at somebody and say, this is going to be exciting. And, of course, we have so many books. Even in the new book, I explain kingdom and what it really looks like in one of the first chapters early on. And um, most of what we've done here has been from a kingdom perspective. But the kingdom is filled with miracles. And... I don't think we interpret miracles right. We're wanting to see something happen. Everything from Revelation is a miracle. And you want to understand the power of Revelation manifesting. And once you're connected in kingdom, you see miracles. And so uh, I watched the Lord send a hurricane to get... John and Cheryl not to go home and to stay here with us. And, and it's just a blessing to have them stay here. So they're going to express to us kingdom miracles that are already beginning to blow in. So if you would, stand and welcome John and Cheryl Price from New Jersey. Amen. Well, I'm going to be the warm-up act. Thank you, Lord. It was quite a trip. Quite a trip. That prophecy got the, the First Nation people's attention. A white-haired man would come, and his name would be Eagle. They were all ears, because here was a white-haired man whose, whose name was High Eagle. And so it's good when the Lord... How many of you know it's good when the Lord goes before you and prepares the way? gets their attention and really that's what miracles do they get people's attention we were talking in the airport chuck and i i think it was the hong kong airport we were in so many airports i don't know which one it was at this point but i think it was hong kong and i was telling him a story about when cheryl and i were on a plane and a man died on the plane about 15 rows ahead of us uh, he died on our way to atlanta they had to, they were doing an emergency evac but he was dead already and we stood up and rebuked the spirit of death, and he came back to life. And uh, I knew this man. He was a very wealthy, powerful businessman in North Jersey. He was one of my bosses when I was in the brokerage business. And he was a, a Messianic Jew. He had gotten saved, but he was, you know, he believed very conservative beliefs. Didn't believe in healing or any of those types of things. And we landed. They took him off the plane, and then the plane took off, and we went to Atlanta. And then a day or two later, he joined us in Atlanta and came up to me and said, I, I need to talk to you and your wife. And I said, okay. I, sa I said, what? You know, usually when he wanted to talk to you, it wasn't a good thing. He was a very powerful man. Made, he made over a million dollars a year at that point, but he made more money in lawsuits than he made in earnings. And he was, he was good at that. So when he wanted to talk to you, you usually were on edge. And uh, he said... I just wanted to tell you, I left my body in that plane, and I was hovering outside of the plane, but I could see into the plane. I said, yeah. He said, and I heard the prayer that you and your wife prayed. 
You rebuked the spirit of death, and the minute you got done saying in Jesus' name, a vacuum sucked me back into my body. Now, that's neat. <laughs> I like those experiences. And see, I've been pondering with, the, with the, this last, I'm glad to be here with you with the last days of the wonderful feast that we're in, this Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, all this is so rich for me because I'm learning, still learning, and Robert's teaching on all of it's Bless the world, really. I mean, I, I go around the world and there's people that have been activated into things because of Robert's teachings, and I have. And I've been thinking about, we need more miracles. You know, I, we all need character, we all need more of the word, all that, but how many of you know we need miracles too? Look at your neighbor and say, you're a miracle worker. You were destined to be a miracle worker. You weren't put here just to learn things. You were put here to do things. And so as Robert's been teaching on all the feasts and everything, I've been, I've been tracking with him over the years. But this last feast, you know, this tabernacles thing, I just wanted to hit on Moses' tabernacle and what God's been saying to me about it and how the feasts are intermingled with it. You know, when Moses built his tabernacle, the first thing there was the brazen altar. That's where you brought your sacrifice, you know, to atone for your sins. You offered this sacrifice. The priest examined it, killed it. Then you went over to the laver and washed, got the blood off you from all the sprinklings. And then you went into the inner court. And there was the lampstand, the, the light shining off that. Have you ever been at a campfire and sat around the campfire with people and you saw how their faces glowed from the light? See, when you went in there, you began to glow and you began to feel the presence of God. And it's a good place. And then you look over here and there's the showbread, there's the manna, there's fresh bread from heaven. It's like new teachings that come to us. And you, you've read something in the Bible for 15, 20 years, and all of a sudden you hear a teacher bring forth a new message, and it just like, it like your insides begin to pop. Have you ever had that feeling? And, and then you go over to the bowl of incense, and it's intercessory prayer and worship. And uh, my goodness, you have experienced it here all the time. We've experienced in our church the worship, and it's like it's heaven on earth. But what I've noticed is people get hung up there. See, that's not the end result. There's a, there's a holy place over here. There, there's a, there was a, a veil there that when Jesus died, ripped in the temple. And the reason it ripped was so that we go in there. I mean, we can sit here and say, oh my goodness, I had a great revelation from the Lord. Oh, I, I heard a great teaching. Or I, I, Did you ever get a good teaching and, and think, man, this is good? Write it all down. You know, it's every now and then. Every now and then I get a good teaching. And I write it down and I, and I feel good and I feel relaxed after that. Like I got what I was supposed to get today. But I want to tell you something. There's more. Don't be satisfied with just the inner court. Go past that place into the ark of the covenant. Get into covenant blessings, covenant workings. I call that the supernatural womb. That's my expression for it. That's where miracles are birthed. That's where, well, you got the ark in there. You've got a bowl of, of bread, manna, which represents it, a lot of that stuff. You know, it's interesting when I read about all that stuff. That represents when the people grumbled about not having bread. And then there's Aaron's rod is in there. And there's a representation there where people were rebelling against the authority structure of God. And then there's, of course, the law. And in Exodus, you know, they all said, oh, we're going to do it all. We're going to follow the whole law. And you know that didn't work out for them. So in that Ark of the Covenant, in that box, were things that represented our shortcomings. But then it's covered. And the priest comes in and sprinkles it with blood. And all those shortcomings that you and I have, how many of you know we have shortcomings? We're never going to arrive completely. We're never going to be perfect. But God's already made a way and allowance for those shortcomings so that we can be in that place and be a worker of signs and wonders and be a miracle worker. Yes. 
I just love the fact that we can come boldly into that place after having illumination and revelation, revelatory teaching, and having our time in prayer and intercession, don't leave off there. I'm telling you something, not because I'm telling you, I'm showing you what the Lord has shown me. I'm leaving off there sometimes. We have got to be a people, if we want to really unlock miracles, to get in behind the veil, where the veil's been ripped open for us. And so, with that, we're, we're going to tag team today. That's my word for you, though, is this is a place of tremendous revelation. This is a place, I mean, it's an honor for me to be here. I think of all the teachers that are here. If I was the type of person that was easily intimidated, I'd probably be intimidated right now. But you know me. I'm the, I, I, I'm the best John Price that there is on earth. I don't have to be a Robert or a Dutch or a this one or a that one. I just got to be the best John Price. Raymond's the best Raymond he can be. I mean, that's about all you get right there. I love you, Raymond. You know that. Don't you? But I know there's more John Price can experience in the kingdom realm. I know there's more that Marty can experience in the kingdom realm. Brian, I, all of you, you realize sometimes we just say we're satisfied. That was such a good meeting. That was such good teaching. That was such good worship. That was such good intercession. Now you just want to relax and kick back. That's the point where you want to get, get in and spend time in the miracle womb, the supernatural womb of God, and birth something in your life, something new, something fresh. So with that, I'm going to call up Shirley Goodness. Last time I was here, she was recovering from surgery. She's recovered now. And she's going to share some supernatural things that just happened to her through all that process. But, and then we want to activate you into to, to a miracle realm, because we've had many miracles in our life. But that realm isn't us. That realm comes from that secret place. That intimacy that only you can develop, really, I think it starts individually. And then it can overflow corporately, but it has to start with you wanting to spend time with him. Here's my bride of 42 almost. Hi, everybody. Thank you, John. It was awesome. You know, we are privileged, all of us, to be able to live a supernatural life. And, and I have to say that most of the time with me, it comes by accident. It doesn't, um, it doesn't come for me by sitting and pondering things uh, all the time, which is good because, you know, you can rely sometimes on your, um, on your intellect or on what you've done to d deserve something, and that, that usually does not happen to me. It usually is I stumble into it. We had an, an experience a little while ago where a woman in our church named Sarah died. She, um, John was doing a baby dedication up at the front of the church, and it was a miracle dedication because both of these children were unable to be conceived or born, and through a word of knowledge, uh, the mother produced uh, eggs to be able to have these two children. And they were being dedicated at this day, and I turned around just to look on the other side of the, the, the church building, and this lady, Sarah, was dropping to the floor dead. And her, uh, her good friend, Renita, and I caught her before her face smashed into the ground. So we, we lugged her up into the chair. Now, the dedication is going on in the front of the church. They're not even seeing what's happening. We're feeling for a pulse, we're feeling for breath, there's no breath, no pulse. So I looked at Anita, uh, Renita and I said to her, Renita, Sarah's gone home to be with the Lord. I wasn't even thinking, pray for her or call 911. I just, I just said, she's gone home to be with the Lord. And something grabbed my hand and put it on her chest. It, it had to be an angel. It, put, it just grabbed it and put it on there. And when my hand hit her chest, 
Out of my mouth came, I rebuke the spirit of death and command you to leave her. And when I said those words, I looked up and coming down from heaven were two, uh, two things of golden, it looked like pipe smoke, but it wasn't going up like a pipe, it was coming down. And those two strands of smoke shot up both of her nostrils like a sword and when it did she went <gasps> she still didn't open her eyes still didn't move her body and we could we could still not find a pulse on her so we kept our hands on her and continued to release life and in about 20 seconds uh, she still couldn't move her body but her head moved and she went like this with her eyes wide open. I thought I was going to die then. I was so scared. I mean, it was like a horror movie, but it was a good horror movie. And, and, she, and she looked at me and she said, there is something warm inside of me and it's chasing out the cold. Now, she did not know what I had seen. So we continued to pray for her. In 10 minutes, she could move her body. And we did send her to the hospital. She was there for three days. She had every test known in creation done to her. They could find nothing. And even the blood pressure disease that she had and a, a long-term injury in her arm was healed. And when the doctors came in and said, we can't, f yeah, praise God. But, I mean, because nobody even prayed for that, right? And when the doctors kept trying to find something, she said, why are you trying to find something? Jesus raised me from the dead. He, he's not going to raise me with sicknesses. So, she, so now she's 80. This is, she's 80 years old now. She has real pink cheeks. She has been filled with vim and vigor. She goes to every meeting possible. It's like her youth has returned. That was not a planned resurrection. It didn't even enter my mind, but God, if, if, if we will be a people that there's a scripture that says um, that, that God wants our inner man to be strengthened with the, the power of his might. He wants us to be strong in the Lord. And that word means that that scripture means to be endued with miraculous power. It means, it means to be filled with vigor or life so that you can release miracles. Thank God, tell him that. Thank God I don't even have to think about it. I can just walk in it. While I was recovering in the hospital in uh, April, I don't even remember when I had the surgery now. I had come out of surgery, it was a five hour surgery, and I, was, I would say that probably I was at the most vulnerable I had ever been in my life during that, that time of just coming out of the, the operating room. And I, thankfully, I had a team of intercessors who were at the hospital with me. Uh, my daughter was with me, who's an emergency room nurse. And I was covered. People, thank you for praying for me here. I could feel the peace and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in my room. Uh, I stayed in the recovery room for five hours, and they finally found a room for me, uh, and they moved me to the room probably about 11.30 at night, and Julie was with me, my daughter. She was going to spend the night and be my private duty nurse, and as we walked in, as we, you know, were in the room there, I was reclining in the bed. Julie was sitting next to me in a little hardback chair. In the room came the nurse tech that was going to be taking care of me, a young man, and all I can tell you was, when he walked into the room, the spirit that walked in that room with him was not conducive to my peace. Uh, it, it, it shook the spiritual atmosphere as he came in the room. He did not give me water. He did not take off the blood pressure cuff. He did not give us the call bell that we should have had. And he refused to find Juliana reclining chair to stay overnight with me in and we knew the hospital had them because we had been there with my mother and he and he left the room well Julie she looks like me but she acts like John she had a few choice words to call that man <laughs> that's our girl I mean you want you want her for a nurse because let me tell you she is your advocate 
So he walked out of the room, and um, I know she thought I was on drugs, but I really wasn't. They could only give me uh, ibuprofen. And I looked at Julianne, and I said, that devil is not going to disrupt the peace in this room that God has given me. I command you to be transferred to another floor in the name of Jesus. Well, she just rolled her eyes. And I, look, I had looked down. I had looked down as I was reclining there, and my spirit man stood up out of me. I saw it for the first time in my whole life. And he had muscles. And he, had, he had been working. I mean, he was, he was really muscular. And he stood right up out of me. And it was like this, uh, something took over. And I prayed that prayer and commanded that thing to be transferred. Well, Julie just rolled her eyes. She was like, oh, mom, come on. And I'm saying, I'm telling you right now, that devil is not taking my peace. So the, 10 minutes later, the guy walks in the room. He goes, ladies, I have an announcement to make. I have been transferred to another floor. <laughs> then Julie went, wow, listen, <laughs> God has said to me that this is a season where we are to uh, reflect on the strength of our spirit man so that we can command our atmosphere. If our spirit man is strong, it doesn't matter how vulnerable you are. It doesn't matter how uh, unintelligent you may be. I mean, I can raise my hand to that. It doesn't, it, those things don't matter. If God is in you, if, if he is strong in you, you can walk in this miracle anointing no matter what your circumstance. You just walk in it. There's no thinking about it. You just do it. And the other thing that God said to me, the Lord spoke to me about, was that this was a season where our boundaries are as far as revelation can see. A couple weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and Jesus was standing in my bedroom. And he reached up into heaven and he pulled down this boundary stone. It was about knee high. It looked like an old obelisk. We have them all over New Jersey. They were from colonial times. And it was, it was swirling like a storm and had, had a sound of a very vicious wind. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, this is the spirit of resistance in your territory that is preventing my kingdom from moving forth uh, in signs, wonders, and miracles. And he said, it's time for you to begin to take this thing down. So I got up out of bed. I wasn't asleep and went to kick it over and my foot went right through it. He said, this is a spirit of resistance, Cheryl. He said, now I want you to turn to the book of Zechariah and read about the boundary stone I have for you. So let's just turn there right now. Zechariah chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake to those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. This is a season where we've just come through, where God has cleansed us. We, we have a change of raiment. We're walking in to the new season. And Chuck and Robert have taught on that a lot. And then he said, set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you will also judge my house. You shall keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by here. And then we, we know, let me, let me just explain that a little bit there. When it says to walk in his ways, we know that means to obey his word and to do what God tells us to do and don't do what he tells us not to do. 
And, and then it goes on to say, if you will keep my charge. That means to keep the present day watch. It doesn't mean to keep yesterday's watch. It means to keep the present day watch when we keep the charge of the Lord. And then, and then he goes on to say, you will judge my house. We will rule judicially in the house of the Lord. We will, we will make, uh, we'll, we'll do legal things for God in his house. We will be, we will rule as an umpire, the, the, the concordance says. We'll be able to tell if it's a ball or a strike coming over home plate. That's what happens when we obey his word and keep his watch. But then he says, and you shall keep my courts. Now that word courts means hamlets. It's taking you out of the house of God and into the territory that surrounds it. In other words, we're not to stay just within the house making judicial decrees, but we're to go out into the territories, the highways and the byways. And the scripture goes on to say to Joshua, and I will give you access to those that are standing around about you. Who was standing around about him in this scripture? The angelic host, the governor, governing leaders of, of the kingdom of God in the earth realm and in civil government. So when we do these things, we have access with the miracle working power that God has given us. But then we see that God gives Zechariah and Joshua, the high priest, he, he gives them a stone with seven eyes. This is our new boundary stone. Our boundary stone is no longer that, that knee-high thing that I needed to kick over that was that was uh, earthly and sensual. The boundary stone is full of the sevenfold spirit of God. And I want to say this to you. Your boundaries are as far as you will allow revelation to shift you. Receive that today. Say there's no limits with God. This morning we were talking in Anne's kitchen and uh, Rosemary and I were sharing even about financial miracles. I had to have my teeth done a year ago, and it was a lot of money. And one day, when I had to, I had to go to the dentist, my bill was $7,450. I didn't have it. And I remember I got down about a week before the appointment. I got down on my knees by my bed, and I just said, Lord, I, I, laid, the, I laid the bill out. And I said, Lord, I know that you have told me to do this, and I know that you have everything that I need. And I just prayed for a little bit, and I felt the Spirit of God lift, and I went on my way. The day before the appointment, I get a letter in the mail from the IRS. And in 2010, we had overpaid our taxes by 7400 and fifty dollars the exact amount that we needed now i called the irs three times because i didn't believe it i thought even though i had the check in my hand and i want to say this to you even in the midst of a great miracle doubt and unbelief is there to speak to you when that woman was raised from the dead uh, the little boy that was being dedicated in the front of our church, he had no idea she had been raised from the dead. But at the end of the dedication, John gave him a little bottle of oil, and he said, Max, go anoint Miss Sarah, because she doesn't feel good. So little Max walks up, he anoints her head with oil, and he grabs her hand, and it looked like he got blown up like a balloon. That's the only thing I can tell you how I saw it. It was like he was filled. It was with the Spirit. And he grabbed her hand and he looked at her and said, Death will not catch you. Now, what five-year-old says that? And the Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, I just spoke through this little child so you would know what you think just happened really did. He's so for us. He is so for us. So I want you to stand up. I want, I want to release the supernatural power of God on you, naturally, that you will naturally walk in it, not even, not even thinking about it, but just as an everyday part of your life because he is in you 
And he is all, it is all about him. It ha- has nothing to do with you. So Lord, I just loose this this morning. I say this morning, God, that their spirit man will be filled and strengthened this year. Lord, I loose that anointing. I loose it over them. I say no limits. Say that with me. No limits. Say it again. No limits. Say it again. No limits. I loose it in Jesus' name. Now look, timing is everything. This is time for this right now. In that tabernacle setting, the the altar and the laver, they represent Passover, the feast of Passover. The inner court with all that revelation represents Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came with new vision. Now is the Feast of Tabernacles. This is the time for that glory realm to be released for you. So again, we say, receive the timing of the Lord for signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. And be bold and step out. Don't hold, don't withhold in your hand when you have the chance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go and sin no more. (laughs) Stay up right here one second. How many of you, when they were ministering, some, you could feel something changing inside of you? It was like, it was almost like there was a reverse of a, of a vice coming together. It was like a vice pushing me out and apart. That there was something growing in my spirit, man. So I want you, once more time, to raise your hands. Just what John and Cheryl have done here, I don't want you to leave without that. They've already imparted. There's been an activation. So, Father, we thank you for what you're doing. That you are supernaturally enlarging us. That you're expanding us. You're causing to come into a new dimension. Not only a vision but of expression of the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, for each person here, each person joining us on webcast, if you're on the webcast, just extend your hand, lift your hand. Let this be a time when you begin to embrace, to feel that new expression, that new dimension, that your spirit man is longing to express the fullness of who you were designed and created to be. Father, we say this is a day that your sons and daughters are coming to new expression of who you've created us to be. We say in this tabernacle season that we are rising that we are rising the identity the fullness of your call that you have for us today that this is a day that we will shout and declare that we are a people of glory a people of power and a miraculous demonstration of holy spirit if that's your cry let a shout be heard from you now wow well, we want to thank you for being with us this service. We're going to come back around 9 o'clock. We've got a lot more worship. We've got Robert who's going to teach us on the significance of this vav year that we're in, entering into. So we'll see you back here about 9 o'clock. Thank you.